welcome guys to Around the Campfire with AmeriCamp, the Ultimate Summer Camp podcast. Uh, we're delighted today to be joined by Chris Roboletto um, from Breeze One Day Camp. Uh, Chris, hello. Lovely to have you on the podcast. Hey, Rob. How are you? It's good to see you again. I'm, I- I'm good, I'm good. Uh, for those that don't know, even though we, I probably posted on all my social medias, the American social media before, I was actually lucky enough to attend Breeze One Day Camp, where Chris is the staff retention officer. I'll just sum up by saying I had the best experience of my life, um, as many others did. Chris was a big part of that, so it's great to get him on today to sort of speak about this past summer, as well as like his history of camp and stuff like that as well. Um, so yeah, Chris, just to start with, just want to introduce yourself, where you're from, your role, how you sort of got started in camp. Of course, of course. So my name is Chris Robolata. Uh, I work here at Breezemont. Last year was my second summer here. Uh, I've lived in New York my whole life, and Breezemont is uh, stationed in Armonk, New York, in Westchester. And uh, I've, I've worked at camp since I was 16 years old. I've, I've worked my way up from general counselor um, all the way up. I've done a little bit of everything, worked in sports, worked in nature, worked with the oldest kids, worked with some younger kids, been a camp director, kind of bounced around a little bit all over the place. So Camp is a universal language, of regardless of where where you go. So it is really cool to kind of see um, so many different perspectives of camp and how it works. Yeah, no, definitely. I think you're a really good example of how you can start a like general counselor, which is what most people do for the first summer, and then you end up making it your your whole passion and your whole career. So was it? It was Camp Kiwi, if I remember correctly, that you started. That was that correct? Yeah. So what? sort of made you want to continue on this camp journey? What was it about that initial, like, first summer maybe they wanted you to make this a career? The the connections I made with the staff that I'm still friends with today and also the connections with the, with the campers as well. Um, I just, I feel like I really made a difference in the, the kids' lives and just in stories that they have told and everything like that. I am lucky enough to work with some of the campers now. So to kind of be behind the scenes with them and talk with them about an issue that they're having and kind of make an inside joke that we once ha- as me as their counselor had that little issue too and how I handled it versus how they're going to handle it. Um, it was really, it's really a cool experience, but I met my best friends for life the yeah. first year I worked at Camp Kiwi. Yeah, that's what I discovered this summer at Breezemont was just how close knit it was. So if I'm right, like I think Jay was Camp Kiwi, Luke, who was one of yep. my uh, yep. sort of supervisors this summer, like, is one of those things where your first summer you're going to be like, ah, oh, it's just a summer job. Never see these people again. And then 15 years later, you've, you've run into summer camp like, together. I'm not, so I'm not going anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I think yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't know that's what I was getting myself into. Mm-hmm. I didn't think that. I thought summer job, I need some money. I like sports. I like running yeah. around. I like meeting new people and trying new things. Why not give this a shot? And at the end of the summer, I asked my boss, I was like, how can I return next year? How can I be that next step up? I don't want to be a general counselor anymore. It was great, but I I look around and I can lead some of these people as well. Yeah. And I was lucky enough to get a shot at a young age to be a, a leadership role, and I kind of ran with it. Yeah, definitely. I think that's what we try and sell to the applicants for AmeriCamp as well. Uh, I mean, me and myself, I went to camp for the first time in 2017, and... Here I am six years later on the podcast after my fourth summer going. Um, That's right. It really is, it really can develop into a career. And I think, again, Breezeman is a perfect example of how it becomes family run and it just leads to many amazing Absolutely. summers afterwards. Um, so, yeah, to speak about Breezeman, um, obviously you covered the basics, based in Westchester, it's a day camp. I think that's what really appealed to me about it was the fact it was a different kind of camp. Those like nights and to, weekends, yep. Those nights and weekends were fantastic. Obviously, not the main reason to, to pick a day camp, you go for the camp itself, but of course. it's always a lovely, lovely bonus to it all. Um, but you sort of want to run through sort of breeze one, just give uh, everyone just an overview, what a typical day looks like, sort of the value sure. of the place, that sort of thing. Of course. So typical yeah. day of breeze one, I would, I would break it down into three different seasons because it really is like three yeah. different jobs. You got the summer, May, June, July, and August, which is just, as you know, crazy. It's busy. All of your planning throughout the year is coming to a close and it's kind of like, all right, now it's time to put our money where our mouth is. Did all of our planning work? Have we thought of everything? That's kind of the busy season where you're so busy you don't even sit down. Now we're in the off season where it's really hard to kind of settle down and settle into the new role from September to December because we're we're breaking camp down. We're sending out our do you want to return surveys and, and things like that. And then... The, the third season is the wind up. And I would say it's January to May where we really increase our international hiring. We start working with the transportation department. There's a lot of different things that kind of get put into play all at once. 
Um, but a typical day here at camp is just obviously early mornings. You get here, no one else is here, and that's like my favorite <laughs> part of the day. Yeah, it's is like the, that, the calm before the calm before absolutely. Before, yeah. I always I always say, man, in one hour this place is going to be filled with kids and staff. Like I better I better take a, a deep breath. Uh, we we have a morning meeting where we kind of just discuss the day, make sure everybody's on the same page, what special events are happening. Unfortunately, maybe there's some weather rolling in later in the afternoon. Uh, those little things and just kind of map out. You know, maybe something happened yesterday that we want to kind of just stop right there or something happened yesterday that we want to revisit to highlight and say yesterday was one of those really good camp days. And then you you, you know how it is. You just get through the hustle and bustle of it and all yeah. of a sudden the buses pull out and you're like, where that, did today go? <laughs> that, that's what amazed me when I arrived for pre-camp. I was like, how can this place work as well as they say it does? Um, right. You've got thousands of the kids coming. you got 96 buses each day. you got everyone to eat and stuff. But it's yep. amazing about how if um, you emphasize this, I believe, during pre-camp, if everyone does their bit, if everyone just does their job and c- commits in, then it just turns into such a great camp experience. You um, have no yeah. idea how much, like, the transportation department is affected by the kitchen or yeah. the nurse. You're like, those people don't, like, that shouldn't, that's not how it yeah. should work. And everything is all connected. Just the conversations and the constant communication that is needed is all day long you need to be available and you need to be like kind of thinking about your job and making sure you're good and then it kind of just falls into place around you once you do that definitely i mean camp within itself is a like ever-changing environment you find that with every camp but just to compare to my own experience a sleepaway was a lot more because the kids were there all the time and sort of knew what to expect each day like it was the same with our camp but we did have more kids that were there for maybe like two weeks or coming on right years and that sort of thing um, and also the amount of event days we had. Um, I was probably the biggest camper myself in the world when it was Carnival Day or Wet and Wild Absolutely. Day. And, stuff. and just how many moving parts sort of worked to make it such a memorable summer, not just for the staff, but obviously the campers themselves. Um, it's just Absolutely. truly amazing. So, oh, you had mentioned yeah. the um, the outside vendors that come in and do the yeah. carnival mm-hmm. or do the this and that. And I just find it so amazing that while the older kids are at the older kid carnival, the little kids have their own section of the carnival. So everybody gets to go home and say they experienced carnival. But if you have a younger kid and an older yeah. kid, they got a totally different experience. So they have different stories to to yeah. tell and, and swap like that. We also have that aspirational growth in our program that when you're three to six, you're doing certain things. And then once you turn seven to 10, you do a little bit older stuff. And then once you're in varsity, you, you get to do a little yeah. bit of everything and have a little bit more freedom to choose what you want to do. Yeah. And that's something that we sell to the parents and the kids of like, work your way through it and be able to experience everything. No, definitely. I think because I worked with Farsi Camp, so some of the campers have been there. It was their sixth, seventh year at camp. And the right. fact they still were like, this is my favorite place in the world. I'm not yep. bored because more opportunities appear um, and they want to go with the camp. And many of them were like, I'm going to become a CIT next year yep. and then I'm going to be a counselor and I'm going to be a team leader one day. Yep. And again, it just speaks to how well Breezemont fostered this community spirit that keeps on growing. It was amazing the camp could come together as one as well for events like Olympics where everyone's chipping in towards the same goal. So you do have your own separate sections, but you still got that massive camp, everyone together in one place sort of moments. At the end of the day, we want that family, yeah. that community. It's it's really important to us to have both, to, to kind of yeah. walk that line between you're going to be able to do what you want and, and grow through the camp. But also at the end of the day, the junior campers and the varsity campers, they're just as important. They need yeah. to be just as close, and that's uh, that's something that's really important to us. We want to do that in our staff as well, because sometimes in junior camp or varsity or upper camp or whoever you may, whatever your mm-hmm. camp calls it, um, it's it, you could be on an island sometimes and be like, I only see the junior camp counselors. I only hang out with the varsity counselors. We try to have those events outside of camp and during camp to kind of get everybody together and form some natural friendships. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so to sort of move on to the campus side of camp, because again, camp is for the campers as much fun as we have. As yes, it all. yes. Um, again, the campus. got to remember that. Summer, yeah, definitely. Uh, the campus I had this summer, I'll remember for the rest of my life because that's how camp works. So many funny oh, stories. But so, if you had to sort of sum up what a Breezemont camper was like, it's maybe a bit of a difficult question. But like, what do you think they gain from being at Breezemont? 
I think um, what our campers are looking for, typically the kids just want to come and, and just have some fun. They're looking for consistency and the counselor showing up every day is that consistency for them. And they want to have fun. They want to play. They want to make friends. They want to fit in. Kind of, it's, it's very similar to some of our young staff who are coming into their first job. They want to just make those friends, make those connections and be liked by their group and f be important in their group. The campers respond to you being genuine. That's the best way I can put it. They want you to be you. If you come in and you try to be somebody you're not, they're gonna figure it out in two days. If you come in and just act like yourself, they're gonna respond better. Yep. They're gonna form those bonds with you. They're gonna look up to you naturally because you're older and you're more experienced. Whether they your your best friends or not, they're always gonna look up to you and, and kind of mirror the person you are. So you always yeah. you're always on display. You always want to kind of mirror what what you want to be for sure no, definitely i think as well the connections you do form with these campers because admittedly myself beforehand i thought oh i'm only going to see the campus you know six hours a day five days a week there's not going to be that time but it's amazing again how camp just responds here with these yep. kids and, absolutely and it's an amazing feeling when you get to week eight and the kids are like oh god please come back next year you're my favorite counselor like and it all hits you at crisis. once right yeah, yeah it all it hits does, you at once yeah. when that happens because during the summer it's mm -hmm. hard to kind of see the end it is. Yeah. Um, you the days are long, the days are hot, and you know you're kind of just like this is the best. I don't want to leave. I love this, yeah. and all of a sudden it kind of creeps towards the middle of yeah. August and week seven, and you're like, oh, it's week seven. We got a whole nother week. We got a whole nother week, yeah. and then how many times did I say to you as we join the buses, like guys, five days left. Like be in the moment as much as possible. Like you're going to see things and hear things from the kids that are going to make you tear up and that you're going to remember for yeah. the rest of your life. Make sure you're there and present for those moments, right? Yeah. Like it's, yeah. it's crazy how much 39 days could change you as a person yeah. forever. No, definitely. I mean, I, again, this is my fourth time leaving a camp afterwards. It's been five weeks. I'm back working within camp, but I still just check my camera roll constantly to be like, oh, yeah. two months ago today, I was doing this. Take and, me back, know, of course. No, of definitely. Course. Like those memories, again, you, you're there making them for the campers, but you're going to be telling people about your summer breeze for the rest of your life. Right. Um, exactly. Uh, so to speak about, obviously, the staff members, your main job is staff retention. Um, can you sort of just speak us through what you sort of look for in a breeze counsellor? Slash like activity sure. leader, like what sort of qualities do you want in a staff member? We look for somebody who buys in to camp, who understands mm -hmm. that you have said it many times in the podcast and we kind of always remind each other, it is about the mm -hmm. kids. We love that you have a good time. We love that you make friendships. We love that you go out and hang out with each other outside of camp. We need that to help build staff morale. Mm -hmm. But just to those people who always know that it's, Big, camp is bigger than themselves. It's about the child's experience yeah. and kind of teaching them through the summer just these basic skills, how to win, how to lose, conflict resolution, sharing, just being basically polite and, and these little moments that are teachable for the kids. We look for those people who understand how important this opportunity is. Uh, we want them to be leaders. We want them to be silly and enthusiastic. That's fine. Um, we want them to dress up on the dress up days and be goofy. Yeah, yeah. We want them to be serious because we want to make sure the kids are safe, but also know that this is not a classroom and we can have a little bit more fun here and have a little bit less structure and kind of galvanize the group that way. Um, yeah. We look for people who are consistently here every day, not just for us, obviously for staffing reasons. That's, that's pretty obvious, but for the kids um, I've, I've noticed kids change behaviors based on if a staff is there or not yeah. just for one day, just for one day you know it kind of messes with the flow of the group so definitely consistency hard working and who understand the vision of camp i would say to wrap it up again when you first get to camp it is an overwhelming feeling but it's amazing about how you will settle in and these qualities you might not have thought you had before sort of come out due to your time at camp i mean Absolutely. before i went to camp i was a, a quiet nervous boy to be honest with you and then this summer like people couldn't get me to shut up um yep. like just you can't sort of hide who you are at camp and i think that's the beauty of it is that it's very accepting Absolutely. of everybody they know when you are yeah. not being yourself and when you're kind of forcing it a little bit so if you just let it loose let it hang out and just go for it the kids will respond to you for sure yeah 
definitely a completely silly story for myself in the fact that like obviously I'm a massive Taylor Swift fan and when I saw this summer yep. I was yep. trying to hide it from the kids they were like oh you like Taylor Swift blah like, blah and then second week I was wearing my hoodie and they were like oh I'm obviously that's it guy. fantastic that's it. it's just like yep. it's yeah, like yes I am a Taylor Swift guy What? Well, that's it and yeah like, what are you going to do oh, about cool. it and then we just and move then, on exactly and then and then they'll be like Rob Love stories playing go and sit, sit along to it like, that's right yeah, that's it yeah just exactly go, go, go give, give me five minutes while this song plays yeah please. again if someone arrives at Breeze Month for the first time or any camp in, in general what would be the top tips if you had to give them something about like yeah. this is what you need to carry with you what would you sort of highlight for your experience there's there's a few number one is definitely get ready for the full eight week experience don't try to judge camp on one hot or yes. one rainy day yes. there's going to be good days and bad days in everything that you do and you'll find, at least this is what I find, that those really good days completely crush those bad days at camp. Um, before you judge the camp experience, come come do it for eight weeks. And write down how you feel during week one when you go home. I'm tired. Made, did I make the right decision? And then write down how you feel when you're leaving camp. Yeah. Like I'm, I, so many people are like, this was my dream. I made the best decision possible. You were 100% right the way you said. Mm-hmm. In week one, you feel this way, and then you're a different person in week eight, and you don't want to leave. Mm-hmm. Don't take it all in in one day. You will be so overwhelmed. As you said, you, you were a camp person, but coming in day one, there's a lot of moving parts, and there's a lot to understand and get caught up with. Don't try to do it all in one day. You're going to lose something. You're going to make a basic mistake somewhere. Um, by the end of your eight weeks, you'll have it down to a pattern and you'll be like, oh, now, now I'm ready to start my eight weeks of camp because I'm in my routine. <laughs> um, so don't get, don't get overwhelmed. It's easy to get overwhelmed. Just control what you can control and, and do one thing at a time. Uh, and the last thing that I would say when you step foot on here is just be ready to step outside of your comfort zone a little bit. Um, whether it's dancing at the at the theater show or you know doing the staff watermelon eating contest at the end of the day and be ready to do something that you never thought you would do before and just jump in for sure yeah definitely and then breeze wants to camp as well but i think had a lot of great camp traditions whether or not it's the City songs, um, such I'm gonna have peace of mind stuck in the head for the rest of my life, Chris. Ever since you've right. on the second day, that's right. Um, I've got a Monty Bear that I've still keep in the yes. office, little mascot and stuff. Um, yes, just personally yourself, like what is your favorite sort of part of Breeze One? I guess is it a game, is it a certain tradition, a certain day, or there's there's a few that come to my head, but the first one that came when you asked the question was Camp Olympics. Yeah. You mentioned it earlier in yeah. the podcast. I think it is my favorite part because. You get everybody together, those different age groups. You get the kids who want to play sports all day and who are super competitive and want to win everything. And then you have the people who are they, – they'll play basketball. They're fine at it, but they'd rather read or have a nice conversation or relax somewhere. And you get those kids really into the competition aspect. I also think it's very, very important to teach people at a young age how to win and how to lose. It's it's so yeah. in everybody's faces who wins and who loses, white team or blue team. Those are our colors at Breezebond. Yeah. And, you know, 50% of the camp is thrilled and 50% of the camp can't believe that they just lost Camp Olympics. And, you know, that is a little bit of a harsh way to look at it. But we do want to kind of have a culture of when you win, you show respect. When you lose, you say good game. No. Definitely Camp Olympics, I think, would say no. is my number I'd, one favorite. I have to agree with that. One of my core memories from this summer is looking up to the sky and seeing a plane go by with Go Blue Team. And I was just like, they yep. really gone all out with this. Like, it, yeah, that, that, was, mind, so. that was quite yeah. the... Um, you got to give Katie Longo credit. She, she handles yeah. that stuff and she... She made some calls and it wasn't looking like it was going to happen. And then all of a sudden, a big banner came over that <laughs> says, Breeze, Breeze Mont Camp Olympics, go white, go blue. And that was yeah. that was something that was really no, cool. I, yeah, I remember sending that to like my friends and stuff. And they were just like, like where are you working at, Rob? Because like, yeah, they exactly. were getting a place to cheat them on throughout the day. So um, yep. this is one question we sort of ask everyone we have on the podcast. What is your favorite camp activity? If you had to pick one thing you could do all day at camp, um, I know Gaga was sort of the, I never yes. that before I went to Breezemont. Everyone loved it. Um, I developed a new found love for it afterwards. I might have been to Jay yeah. beforehand and being like, you love it. And I was like, ah, it's probably just a stupid game. But that sort of became my thing throughout the summer. Um, if you had to pick one for activity sure. to do, what, what, what is your thing? 
uh, especially with your age group, they love they love that guy. Yeah, um, I would yeah. say if I could only play one camp game, it would be knockout in basketball. It goes quick, and you could get a whole bunch of people playing, and and when the people get out, they kind of can watch and still are engaged. It's not a very boring aspect, so it kind of encompasses mm-hmm. everybody. And some of my favorite camp memories as a camper were those camp wide knockout games. Where, you know, I was the final one and there were three staff members left and everybody's like, oh, can Chris do it as the camper? And it was like the coolest moment ever. Now, I didn't win, but I was alone with the counselors in knockout and everybody was like, how'd you make it that far? It was just a cool memory for me. So I think I got a soft spot for for knockout. And you get a kid gets you out and you see how it makes their whole week of like, yeah. I got Rob out in knockout. Oh, They're yeah. still talking about it in school. Like, like they're playing knockout in gym class right now, being like, remember when I got Chris out? You know, and that's that's what it's all about. That's, that's really that's awesome. That's what I mean. I know I know if I go back next year, I'm gonna be reminded by my kids like I got you Absolutely. out last year. Absolutely. Like, I got you out last summer, year. week five, yeah. Tuesday, and you're like, How do you remember that? It's like yeah. I'll never forget it. Just to sort of sum up then, if you had to say to somebody, why should they go to camp? Why should they sign up for America camp? Why should they go to Griezmann? Can you sort of try and sum it up in, in a Yeah, yeah, points, I could or? I could do the the best that I can. I I would say mm-hmm. the reason why you want to come to Breezemont over a different camp or a different agency is just we really are invested in our staff. We want our staff to be successful here. Whether that is um, you know, trying to move positions if it's not for you, again, that's not guaranteed, but we will work with you to try and set you up for success. Um, We take an interest in your home life and your outside life, not just your camp um, role and how how hard you're working. And that's super important to us, don't get me wrong. But we also wanna make sure that everything back home is cool and everything in your dorms is cool. And you know, you seem a little off today. Is it just, is it jet lag? Is it homesickness? What is it? We notice when you're not yourself. Um, that's that's a big one for us, and we may not be able to fix every problem, but we will show you that we will try. That's our biggest yeah, thing. Definitely. We will make an effort to be there for you, as well as like, Breezemont is great. I think the outside of what we offer as well, the thirty minute train ride to New York City, the nights and weekends off, like you had said, it is not the main reason you came to Breezemont. That's totally oh. fair, but it is one of our biggest selling points because Definitely. camp camp is the number one experience we push, but then that cultural exchange about go see the city, go to the Broadway play, go to Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty, go see what you came to see. You're with the kids all day long, you're showing them respect, you want to be here, that's what we need, and then you get some time to yourself as well. So I think the the contrast between it's time to work, it's time to play is, is super important at Breezemont yeah, as well. I think Breezemont handle that incredibly well. Um, it is sort of generous, the allowances you do you do give in terms of time and it's very much appreciated by all the staff and it helps create, again, those memories and those connections outside of camp in that yes. you are bonded by Breezemont and then you can go and enjoy every aspect outside. Absolutely. Of and then when you're bonding outside of Breezemont, when you come you bring, to work, yeah. you work together you work for the person next to you as well because you're like, I hung out with this person all weekend. I know what's going on with their family. I know what's going on at home. I know they're not feeling well today. I'm showing up for the kids and for them. That's that's kind of like the family aspect that we always, we love to see here. It's my, it's my favorite part of camp is the international staff exchange between the Americans and yes. the internationals. <laughs> Just sharing stories of what how we speak and what we say and, oh, your breakfast is a little funny. Where is X, Y, and Z? Those are my favorite conversations to have. <laughs> Definitely as well. I think, again, as well, just... It's the little moments. So like when I'm having a game of pool with somebody after camp and we're just talking at night and we're yeah. all just those little moments as well. And the fact that I've been back three weeks now, I've already had two different camp reunions with different people. Absolutely. Um, we, we don't want to leave it behind. Um, so I think just personally as well, um, like you and Jay as well are such great personalities to sort of sell the breeze my experience. Thank you, thank you. Um, you guys came over for a camp fair, I believe like last October. I yep. was meant to be working it, helping getting other people jobs. Met you and yep. Jay at dinner, and I ended up there for three months. Um, that was that no was my favorite team. part. Yep, yeah. that was my favorite because it was like you kept obviously you're sending everybody staff, making yeah, sure yeah. everybody's getting an equal share, and then we got an email from you on our on our way home, and it was I was like, oh, look at this. I was like, this is interesting, and obviously we were very excited yeah. to have you. The the fair was incredible. It was my first time in Europe, so I'm excited to come back for another fair and see a little bit more. But uh, but yeah, it was just an incredible 
incredible turnaround, an incredible experience for us, and, and we're excited for, for summer 2024. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think as well for me, sending those people through to as American participants and then becoming Breezemont colleagues was a great feeling for me to be like, Absolutely. I've seen these people. Some of them are probably sick of me. Like, some of them are literally signing them up and then they're like, why is this man yep. telling me to camp? But it was, yep. it, was, it was great to see them all the way through. Um, so, yeah, speaking for 2024, um, any sort of people that went to camp this summer, anything, any hints about what 2024 is going to look like? Any inside exclusive you can give them or? Yes, yes. So, actually, um, unfortunately, we have not had our after camp retreat yet where we kind of yeah. go and we, we everybody keeps notes throughout the summer of changes and things that went wrong, things went really well that we should kind of harp on and, and do again. Uh, so we haven't had that meeting yet. Um, so it's still kind of very up in the air for 2024. I know that we want to obviously enhance some things that we did well and maybe look at some things that we can change and be better at. Uh, but right now we have not had that meeting. So unfortunately no exclusive yet, but once I know <laughs> I could definitely give you a heads up. Okay, fantastic. I was hoping to sell this as Breeze Mod exclusives, but I'm sure right, we'll, get, exactly. we'll get enough stuff throughout. Um, but yeah, fantastic. Chris, it's been absolutely loving uh, lovely speaking to you. Um, I'm hoping I can turn next summer and probably many, many summers until I'm an old man. Awesome. Um, but awesome. I hope you'll have us back as well. Um, but it's been lovely chatting to you there. Thank you for coming on the podcast. And yeah, hopefully we can do a, a podcast again at some point.